Hi everyone, welcome to my chat with Grace from Studio 10. I discovered this brand this year and what I love about them is they're so innovative. Grace has really discovered what's lacking in the makeup market for people that want easy to use products that don't require so much attention and all the blending and complicated methods of how you've got to put it on and you've got so much time before it dries and sets and you can't do this and you can't do that. It's, it's really, really easy to use products specifically designed for your skin as you naturally get older and realistically that's from your mid-30s onwards. So I hope you enjoy your chat. Grace also does a demo which in reality she can do in under 10 minutes. I think it's something like six minutes but because we were chatting it took a bit longer. But I hope you enjoy it and as always leave me comments and let me know if you use the range, if you're familiar with Studio 10 or even if you've got any questions that you would like to pass on to Grace or we can have in future chats. So Grace it's so lovely to talk with you and I, I have seen your products before, I've definitely seen them a lot on Instagram, a lot of people are talking about them. I saw your numerous videos with Glynis Barber. I think that's where I really got a chance to see you and uh, hear all about the brand. Um, I love Glynis. Isn't she just an amazing role model? Oh, do you know, she really is. Ageless is the word. What she's doing yeah. really is, it's useful, but she's also inspirational too. So I think it's- Yeah, she oh, is. So much. She's and such an amazing, gorgeous, gorgeous woman. I mean, like truly beautiful on the outside and beautiful on the inside. I love her. Oh, well, those videos really introduced me to your brand where, like I say, I'd seen it on Instagram. I also have seen in various magazines where it's been talked about. Did you win an award recently or a couple of- Yes, uh, we did for our foundation, Women and Home. So best foundation, um, which is fantastic. And I'm not surprised because I've had a chance to try some things and I'm wearing it just now. And what I really want to know, if anyone doesn't already know about it, is how your brand came to be. What was really the instigator that made you realise, I need to create this? Yeah, that light bulb moment. Well, yeah. it was quite simple, really, in context of, you know, in my 40s, I wasn't using the same skincare as I did in my 20s. And I thought, well, why am I using the same makeup? Because your skin's different the needs of your skin are different. Um, and my lifestyle was different as well. And I just thought, why isn't there a makeup brand designed, formulated for mature skin? Because it's really important to make sure you've not only just used products with the right ingredients, but the texture, the finish, the undertones. And that was really the sort of premise and also I wanted to simplify it because makeups there's so many products and formats and colors and you know most makeup brands have two three four hundred different SKUs it could be quite intimidating and I thought you know what? I want to simplify it because it's got to be quick and easy it's a very very powerful medium to transform I mean we spend fortunes don't we on skincare because we want beautiful skin at least we make up Within a minute, you can have beautiful skin. Does wash off though, that's my caveat. <laughs> but, so I was really interested in that. So, you know, makeup that does a job of work rather than a fashion look, season, catwalk, that, that fashion story, I was like, I'm not, I'm not interested in that. I want to use makeup to enhance my skin, but my best skin. Um, so that's sort of how it started. And of course that, when your skin starts to change, it's really around 35, obviously into 40s, 40s, 50s. I was really interested in that sort of middle age. Obviously, I was middle age and middle age. And what I realized is so many women feel invisible. They don't feel as relevant. They don't feel as attractive. It's a real confident. It, like it, it knocks. It's, you're robbed of your confidence. And... I thought, no, I want to change that. I want to change the rhetoric. All these outdated stereotypes of what middle age looks like is not, doesn't represent women today. Like, you know, I'm 55 now. 55 is not as it was in my mother's generation. And I'm not just saying it, but you look good. So you, oh, thank you're you. obviously a good advert for what your ethos is. 
and I think oh. as well it's a really good point um the old classic about the adverts and it's the models oh. that they choose it's not really changing they say it's changing but mm. it's you know for me it's part of my and this is my passion and my purpose this pro-age movement pro-age not anti-age yeah. and when you think about the word anti-age it means anti-getting old well it's going to affect all of us and actually it's a privilege but I think because we live in a almost like ageist society when we think of beauty it's linked to youth right and youth equals beauty and I think it is perpetuated by fashion media music beauty industry to be beautiful you have to be young so it puts this pressure on on women as they age they lose their currency um they're ignored by the beauty industry so even if they're promoting you know anti-wrinkle products they're using 25 year old models mature models aren't utilized enough across fashion and beauty any industry really and you know you wonder why most middle-aged women feel invisible or don't feel attractive don't feel relevant don't feel vital and there's this pressure and this is the issue that I have this pressure to look 10 years younger 20 years younger yeah. and it's a horrible cycle but with men aging has kudos and it's a different, it's more of a positive spiral. That's so for me, anchored in the brand is this pro-age movement because I think we need to, set, actually it's the Glynis Barber, isn't it? Yeah. You know, ageless, beauty is ageless, celebrate age, wear it loudly, wear, wear it proudly and don't let age define you negatively. And it shouldn't stop you. Exactly. It shouldn't stop you doing anything. I love your message. I think that's, it's sad when you hear someone saying that they hate getting older because exactly as you say, all the, the things that you've learned, all the opportunities that arise, it's actually wonderful when you think, right, here we go. What are we going to do this year? Next birthday, right? What's the plan this year? And yeah. that's, um, so I'd love to know again, was there a key moment when you'd been leading up to thinking about the brand? And then was there just that moment when you thought, right, it's, it's now? I think it was when I hit my mid forties, it all started to come together. And I was in makeup before in product development and brand development for a makeup artist brand. And, you know, I, I guess part of that is I could, I could see the data, I could see the sales, I could see what women were buying, I could see the age groups, I could, and I was there myself and I was frustrated with the product that was available for me. And then it was really a light, a light bulb moment and I think part of it was you know what yeah I'm in my mid late 40s I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do it because I can so it's sort of and I think today when you sort of you build a brand there has to be a real purpose to that brand for social good and I'm passionate about this pro-age movement I mean it's just I feel like I'm a pro-age warrior and maybe it's self-serving but you know, I don't, I don't want age to limit me. And worse is I don't want it to rob me of my confidence. So on the flip side of that, makeup for me is the confidence that you wear on your face. It gives you, and you know, when we say this, you know, if you've had a terrible night's sleep and you wake up and you're so tired, you're exhausted, and you look in the mirror and you look exhausted, mm -hmm. the good news is you don't need to look it anymore. It's that transformational as a medium, it's so powerful. So I'm a big advocate of wear a little bit of makeup every single day, because it, it's powerful. That is so true. And even during the first lockdown, I did that classic thing where I thought, oh, I'll just give my skin a little rest today. I don't wear like a full face every day, but I always wear something. And I did yeah. get into that habit where I thought, oh, I'll just not bother today. And then that became, Oh, I haven't bothered for a while. And do you know, when I did put makeup on again, people did say to me, oh, you look a little bit like, not so much healthier, but I think that you said, oh, you look more awake. You look a little yeah. bit more. I think maybe you felt a bit more bubbly because you'd actually, you saw yourself in the mirror and you didn't look just like this neutral canvas. <laughs> yeah, it's so true though. But you know, when you, like you look in the mirror and you look tired, 
Mm-hmm. And you go, oh, I look so tired. It has the things that we say drive how we how we feel. So you're going to feel, and it's it again. It robs you of your confidence. It brings you down. And actually, what we want to do is elevate. And I I wear makeup every single day, right? Every single day. It's like brushing my teeth. It's yeah. part of my morning routine. It's part of my well being. You know, I feel dressed and ready to take on the day. So I think it's very powerful. And during lockdown, I did loads of Zooms. And once again, you know, women saying, well, you know, I don't wear it when I'm just at home, you know, my tracksuit bottom or whatever I'm doing. And I'm like, I wear it every day because it gives me a boost. It gives me a lift. Yeah. See, I and do. even though, you know, I was wearing tracksuit bottoms quite a lot, let me tell you. See, and I, I do. I I wear it a, a nice sort of shirt or blouse or. I wear it every day. And it was just through lockdown that I thought I'll have a breather. And the funny thing is, when I started wearing it again, and you would open the door to the postman and he would actually, I could see in his face, it was like, oh, that's, that's better. <laughs> you, could t- you could just tell that the postman was like, yeah, that, that, he didn't say it, but I could see it in his face. He was like, yeah, yeah a little bit of makeup. You look a little bit more. Yeah. I do think, and you're actually just, it, it does just make you feel, like you say, if you weren't dressed right, if you, you know, I, I wouldn't drive in my pajamas. So I don't feel that if I've got, like if I didn't wear my makeup when I was just going out and about, I just don't feel finished. And yeah. that's really what it's like. I think but, part um, of it is like self care, mm-hmm. and um, you know, cause you're worth it. Yes, I think is actually a, that's a positive. Cause you're worth it is a really positive phrase because we are worth it. I do it for myself mm-hmm. because I'm valuable and I'm worth it. Um, the other side of the beauty industry, as I said, I have a real wish you because I think they have a lot to answer for with anti-wrinkle anti-aging this sort of perfect unrealistic image of you know women and you know I, I think it puts pressure on women and you know if it robs you of your confidence or your vitality and your purpose or value it's 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 not, it's not positive. And I think that is why we live in an ageist society um, and ageism exists. And the reality is we're living much longer. Mm. So, you know, we've got to, and you know, all it, beauty is ageless, isn't it? Yeah. Every age is beautiful. Oh, you're it's so just true. not this archetypal, you know, beautiful, youthful face. It's different, but it's still as beautiful. Oh, a hundred percent. Couldn't agree more. And that leads me on to the products. You very kindly sent me yeah. something to try. And well, I have to be honest and say, you've got a, how can you put it? The, the products put their money where their mouth is and you've got this great, um, I wouldn't call it a hook because that sounds, that, that kind of downplays it, but you say that we are able to put a very quick face of makeup on. Yes. In no time. And yeah. I was, I think, what, 10 minutes it took me. And that was me. Again, I was taking a bit of time here and I was trying this and I thought, so you think even less than 10 minutes. You yeah, so what I'm going to show you, what I'm going to show you is mature skin makeup, but really makeup in four easy steps. It's your mm-hmm. everyday morning routine. It's not a full face of makeup because I think the Studio 10, like every brand has a look. Um, and we don't really have a look because we are no make, you know, the no makeup, makeup. We're like yeah. no makeup, makeup, makeup. It's your skin, but your best skin. It's your features, but your enhanced features. And the, the sort of, it doesn't look like you're wearing makeup. So those base principles, it was, I think it was India Knight from the Sunday Times. She said, you're like spanks for the face. I'm like, and I was like, I don't want to be the bra and knickers, the underwear of the makeup industry. It's hardly glamorous, is it? When you've got catwalk, celebrity, fashion shows. And I'm like, and here I am, bra and knickers. But when I thought about it, I was like, that absolutely sums up Studio 10. Because, you know, 
make up their own fashion trends as well, aren't there? So, you know, it might be, you know, a coral lipstick or it might be, you know, a glitter metallic eye, whatever it is. But if you don't have the basics right, that makeup's never going to look fantastic. And especially as your skin starts to mature, because there's so many changes that that happen that we need to deal with, which is why I sort of say studio does a job of work and it is spank for the face. I do so think that, that has nailed it. it. That, that is it, a good I'm description, so no, it's true. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's a really good phrase, but I'm like, oh, bra and knickers, you know, or, you know, underwear. So <laughs> I'm going to show you really quickly the four principles. And then whether you use Studio 10 or anybody else's makeup, they're the base principles. And then you can add um, any look that you want. Plus, this gives you a really beautiful, natural, no makeup makeup look. So I've got no makeup on at all today um so the four steps are prime perfect shade and shape and it would be really interesting when we go through it to see did you do it in the same sequence or you know and the sort of thinking thinking behind it so for me step one is prime so prime is about even the texture of the skin yeah because as we age we obviously get fine lines we get wrinkles skin's much drier in large pores so primers are really really important so this is our youth lift glow plexion and it is a primer but it's radiance creme it's a highlighter it's a luminizer in one because i i don't like products i don't want a like a suitcase full of makeup I want a makeup bag so a lot yeah. of our products are multi-purpose multi-function but yeah. as a primer what I love about this is there's a number of different ways you can use it so if you don't need foundation um or you just have a tinted moisturizer you can just as I do it just put it a little bit just all over my face just all over my face and it just gives you this lovely warm radiance it's also got a binding agent so if you put anything on top it will not it will not Last drop night. it will not come off because we we need makeup to be long lasting we're so flipping busy all the time yeah. we don't want to be redoing our makeup and it looks but as if, if we, I did the same I did it same as you and what I can honestly say is it wasn't sticky but you could tell that it had that binder in it but it wasn't sticky and it yeah. had a lovely I would say glow, you know, some primers have that funny metallic -y look to them. Yes. Yeah, not metallic -y at all. Yes, because most radiance cremes and highlighters use silver. So light reflecting pearls or very, very super fine glitter. And it's always silver and silver's quite stroby. So, you know, when you use it as a highlighter, you get that yeah. stroby effect. I didn't want that because I wanted to give this like lip from within radiance that looked natural. So a lot of my, in fact, all of my products have a very warm gold undertone. Gold's much softer and it blends into the skin yeah. much better than silver. And then if you've got amazing skin and you don't need foundation, you can put a couple of drops in your moisturizer. If you've got a tinted moisturizer, you can just put a couple of drops and it is stunning with body lotion in the summer months and you can just put it all over oh, so i just put it literally all over my my face like that nice um and it just gives you a little bit of radiance um then step two is perfect and perfect is effectively a cover-up job um perfecting the skin flawless perfect skin so develop the foundation and this was this was probably one of the hardest products to develop because I wanted medium to full coverage because I kind of feel unless you've got amazing skin, tinted moisturizers don't give you the coverage. And then I did want to be using yeah. concealers and under eye. And I was like, that's too complicated. So I wanted a medium to full coverage. Liquid foundation is fantastic, but they're quite heavy. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, I don't want a mask. I want, I want it to look like my skin. So finding the right formula. And then I wanted the convenience of a compact because yeah, I drop I things. I just I, drop things and it's, it's light. I was going to say it's so light, but it's yeah. not flimsy. So you've managed to make something that's not heavy, but also it's not, you know, sometimes 
you can tell when you're opening it oh I better not yeah. do that too often it's sturdy but super light yeah yeah and it doesn't break in the way that glass bottles mm. so with this foundation it is media to full uh medium to full coverage it's got factor 30 loads of amazing ingredients I try and put hyaluronic acid and everything and um but it gives you the coverage it will cover everything so it means I don't need a concealer if I've got age spots it just evens out my whole skin tone unless you've got even if you've got redness coming through rosacea it's a really good product for if you've got very um severe then I would use our skin perfecter right. um, but for everyday use this product is brilliant but the other thing about it is a, it sort of blends and buffs into the skin so it doesn't sit on top of the skin and this is the detail that I sort of go into what's really important with skin paste products or foundation based products is the finish so it's very slightly dewy definitely not matte it's a big thing we really need to move away from max it's dead on the skin our yeah. skin's much drier and I some tinted moisturizers are a little bit too glossy. Don't want to be glossy. We just want beautiful, dewy, radiant skin. So that getting that right balance. But what I love about this, you don't even need to be exact. So for me, I put foundation all over my face because I, I, I've got, I mean, if you look, I've got bruising pigmentation coming I've got age spots I've, I've got, got vitiligo I mean in my I've got lots of things going on so I put it all over my face but I mean your skin's amazing so if you don't need foundation you don't need to put it on all over your face you just put it on the areas that that'll you need. be this then because I honestly today I was like right eyes come on <laughs> so you're absolutely right because um even though I had a good sleep my eyes were tired today and I thought I'll use this and then I'll see what I need to use after it. Yes. And you were right. Um, all I did was a tiny bit of powder after I'd finished my eyes just to make sure that everything was in place. But I did find this really buildable, so I can vouch yeah. for that. But I'm the same. Um, just I think some of it's wearing glasses and some of it I think is just genetics that I, um, I couldn't do a day without under eye concealer hence why I think I used to frighten the postman when I decided to <laughs> take a break <laughs> and that's what I like really about nice. this texture is it's light enough yeah that you can actually use it under the eyes I always put it over my eyelids as well because it just evens out the skin tone because you've got to be careful with product under the eye because it's got to be ultra ultra creamy and you don't want yeah. anything that's gonna go crepey or dry so to have a foundation that you can use and it meant from a sort of every day I'm I've just got one product and I've literally just put it on all over my face and another thing I must say about it well two things actually even when someone's in their 20s if your product is too dry especially for your foundation after an hour or two you'll see it going into lines that you yeah. didn't even realize you had and that's in your 20s Absolutely. and some people can get a shock when they yeah think, oh, it's so it's so wow. aging yes it's, but it's so aging and also it makes your skin look dry mm -hmm. and flat and you don't want that you want you want light reflection you want that radiance and it is I always say this the wrong makeup at actually any age is is aging um, so I, I love it and it's got factor 30. So, so good. For me, perfect is a cover up job. Yeah. And getting that even tone. And for this, I just feel just looking at it, yeah. and looking in the mirror, my skin looks so much better. And you can tell with your primer underneath as well, you've got a bit of luminosity coming through. But yeah. the fact that you've gave us um, two colours as well to blend, so many people don't realise that you need either contour or a little bit of color adjustment. So that's Absolutely. another thing that's- And also amazing. all year round, because your, your, your tone of your skin changes, doesn't it? Yeah. In the summer months, you're carrying slightly more color. And see, that was another thing that frustrated me. I think because I'm a consumer, I'm a real woman. I was like, I don't want to use one product in the summer and then have to buy another product for winter. So mm. what I like about this is in the summer months, you might want lighter coverage, which means, you know, you can just put a very soft veil in the winter you might need more coverage 
um, depending on color, you've got that darker shade you can mix and match. And exactly as you said, if you want to do some light contouring, it's just the sort of, oh, for me, it's the ultimate skin, you know, skin product foundation. And, um, and then, as I said, I've added in the factor 30. And, but it feels, I remember being at an event and I was demming the products and this lady came up to me and she said, I don't wear makeup don't wear makeup, don't like makeup, don't need makeup. And her skin, I have to tell you, she spent a fortune on um, skincare and did a lot of skin treatments. And her skin was beautiful. The texture of her skin was amazing. But what happens with age is you do, the pigmentation comes through and she had quite a lot of redness here. And we started talking about it. And I was saying, you know, part of foundation is, is just e to even evening the skin tone, which you can't do with, with skincare. She was like, yeah, but foundation's so thick and so heavy and blah, 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 blah. So I said, well, let me try it on you. And I literally, she was standing up and there was loads of people around us. And I just put the foundation on half of her face like that. And she was like, but it doesn't, I don't feel like you've put every, anything on my skin. And I was like, for me, makeup needs to feel and blend into your skin, that thick, heavy, you know, by the end of the day, you're desperate to take it off. I hate that feeling. And she said, but it doesn't feel like I'm wearing any makeup. And almost as though, you know, well, is it really gonna make a difference? And I held the mirror up. I mean, people were like, oh my goodness, it took all the redness out. And she held, you know, we held up a mirror and she could, could, could not, believe it and I said think of especially foundation products think of them as an extension to your skincare routine so and you know I say wear sort of skincare makeup because you've got lots of beautiful ingredients I said but think of it as the end of your skincare routine and it was a shift and she was like I'm never going to leave the house without wearing any now foundation so I said even if you stop there it's skincare with coverage. Yeah, that's a really good way of looking at it. I don't think a lot of people have ever explained it that way. Yeah. I, I like that because you're right. It is, it's also, like you say, protection. You've got the SPF. Yeah. And a lot of people that wear makeup every day are told that they've given their skin that added protection from all the day-to-day -day elements. Yeah, anyway. So, yeah, that's really clever. I like that. Yeah, because I thought it's, I think part of it though is traditionally when we've done our makeup, um, it's a whole look, you know, and it's a whole, and it looks like a full look. So you've got skincare and then you've got makeup. And I think where there's sort of hybrid, like skincare, makeup, and we sit in the middle because it's, we're using the medium of makeup to do a job of work, which is slightly different. So that's perfect and it's as simple as that and it's different for different people so you know if 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 you can if a tinted moisturizer works for you because you don't need that level of coverage fantastic if you don't need a tinted moisturizer brilliant you know there's loads of you know a little bit of concealer under the eye but i think the key thing in perfect is just to even the tone of the skin because you want more of a flawless um finish and then um shade this is quite an interesting area for me because we talk a lot about flawless perfect skin um but as we age we lose color we lose color in our cheeks and we lose pigment so step three shade is about adding color that healthy flush of color to the skin right and most women use bronze for years I use bronze all year round bronze that healthy glow but when I sort of started to analyze it I kind of sort of felt bronze in the summer that natural tan or that fake tan I should say is great but in the middle of winter when it's gray and it's cold you don't really want to go around with a bronzed face for me it, it doesn't look natural unless you've been skiing um, and then there's a lot of skin tones who can't wear bronze. I mean, my one of my 
uh, closest girlfriends is a redhead. I mean, she, her, her hair color, every time I see her, she has the most beautiful strawberry, blonde, red, oh, amazing, amazing. But her skin is porcelain. So she would never naturally tan. Um, and the other thing I think with bronzers, and we've got some amazing bronzers, I think they, they can look quite flat or you go the other end, they can almost look a little bit ruddy. Does that make sense? But yeah. well, you go the other way and you put on the bronze shimmer bricks and then you, I mean, you look like a disco ball, which is not a good look. That's true. Shimmer <laughs> is not a good look for us. Well, it, it just, anything that's got too much glitter or too much shimmer sits on the skin and accentuates every line, every wrinkle, every crepey area of the skin. And you, you just want to avoid that. Yeah. Um, so I was like, I want a color that boosts the complexion. And that's where I developed our plumping blush glow plexion. Lovely. And so this color. really is a complexion boost. This is your eight hours sleep in a bottle. So with the youth left in the foundation, you get lovely, perfected, flawless skin with a, you know, a lip from within radiance, beautiful skin. But now we need color, otherwise it's a bit drab. Yep. So it would be interesting to know how you put this on because it's really more than a blush. And you do apply it in the same way that you do bronzer. Um, so I always, I like to do the apple, the cheeks. I like that. And what's nice about this is it, did you notice it's a really light liquid? Yes, extremely light and really easy to control. Yeah. Sometimes when you've tried different, it can be not, not too liquidy and you think, oh, this one looks okay. I can control it. But when it goes on, it's almost as if you've made yourself into an Aunt Sally doll and then you yeah. control how can I get this blended in? I've just, and then you're like, oh no, never made it streaks. Um, no, it's, yeah. it's very easy to control. So what I wanted to do with this is I wanted, I'm not a fan of powder, especially as, as you age, because powder and especially on, as a, as a blush color, um, it sits on top of the skin. So if you put powder on top of a moisturizer or foundation, it sticks which is why it's longer lasting. So it sticks, sits on top of the skin. But what I wanted to do is because I wanted to give them, you know, like that real skin effect, because this is just a really gorgeous liquid. It just blends and it buffs into the skin. So you still see the texture come through. Yes. And um, I must admit, because I'd seen your video with Glennis too, I was using your tips for the brush. And again, compliments Isn't it on so easy compliments but, on the brush that is a very very easy to use and very soft brush i really yeah. like it. yeah yeah and then did you when you put it on elaine did you so the trick is because you want to boost the complexion a little bit on the forehead no that's just as you would um bronze oh and another little trick most women and i did it right when they put blush on they do this in this angular, right? But we don't have angles. So when I put this on, and once again, because it's a liquid, it's much easier to do, is I like to just do it. I just follow my cheekbones and I do sweeping motions. And what's nice about this, if you put too much on, it doesn't matter because you just blend and buff it. That is a great tip. That really is so, good. And I'll be honest, I didn't do the forehead. So that is a mental note because I didn't do that. So you have. Made me just a little bit on the forehead, yeah. you know, into the hairline, down the nose. Because what you're doing is you're boosting. It's a real pick me up for the complexion. So a little bit on the nose. And then I like to just bring a little bit down the neck. Yeah. Um, and once again, this has got light, um, light reflecting pearl, but it's gold. So it's very, very soft. Nothing's heavy or harsh or and then this is the trick of the century. <laughs> and I love this and I bet, I don't know whether you did this, but you just sweep it through the eyelids. 
that's lovely and that's that's connecting everything in too that's really nice and look it just brightens it's so flattering and it's so pretty yeah. it just i feel i feel healthy look now and also because it's it's got the light reflecting pearl it just accentuates the cheekbones yeah so it's not contouring and then you've got to use highlights i just thought no one's going to do that it's just you know what i wanted with the skin product so even if you drop this like even if you're so short of time and you just think i've got one minute i've got 30 seconds to get out the door if you do this light all over your face where you need it put this on top that is for me beautiful healthy radiant skin and With i saw healthy flush of color a few people on instagram i actually saw today saying that they've got one in use and they've always got one stocked they've always got one ready to go <laughs> so that tells you everything yeah it it, it is our best selling product and um with with this they're slightly different because this is about radiance and then what's nice is you can go on top if you really wanted to do some highlighting you're going out you want a little bit more shimmer you want to put it in the body but this this is about a healthy flush of color and it's all year round and um, interestingly in the summer months when i we've we've got a, a natural tan in a pan product nice. which bronzes up your face to match because when you're doing a tan you want to match up your face the rest of your body yeah. So, and funnily enough, it is, it's a demi mat. It's got no shimmer in it. It's a demi mat because you're faking a tan when you sit in the sun, when you shouldn't really have your face exposed to the sun, but when you catch the sun, it's not shimmery and radiant. So um, I bronze my face up because my mother was Portuguese and I only need to go in the sun and I catch it, even if I wear hats and factor 50 and all this sort of stuff. But I put this on top. I always, always just put it on top and it just, just lifts. So, so that's shade. And then the last sort of part of this is shape. And it's adding shape, definition, structure, um, shapewear, really for the face. Because as we, as we age, we lose collagen. You know, we just <coughs> lose structure to our face brows thin you know lips thin so it's like and that's really where contouring comes in where you start to add that back into the, the structure of the face but once again I just we don't have time like busy women busy lives and I just think if I make it too complicated women aren't going to do it and for me I'd rather simplify it so every woman as she gets ready it's part of her morning routine and it's i mean those three products and if you really really wanted to skip one you could skip that i literally do this put the blush on through the eyelids and then that that's that's pretty much it and then shade brows really important really really important and look at mine there look how thin they are so I think what's what's important as we age, it's about adding structure to the face. Actually, this is for all, all ages. You want to add some structure to the face and you want to frame the face. So when you, the eye is drawn to the face, you've got some structure. So brows frame the top of the face and uh, lips sort of frame the bottom half of the face. And, you know, I do get asked quite a lot about lines, wrinkles, you know, these sort of areas you lose collagen. You can't use makeup to conceal those. You, honestly, you can't, and I wouldn't say um, you could. But what you can do is you can add definition and draw the eye. If you draw the eye to the lip, you're distracting the eye almost from these areas, if that makes sense. So brow pencil, because I just thought mixing different powders, yeah, I'm not, I'm not never going to use that. I just want quick, easy. Um, what's interesting about this brow pencil is the texture's quite hard. It's harder. Like my eyeliner pencil is so soft and so creamy. This is quite hard, but it's deliberately harder a pencil because you're doing just very light 
feathery strokes because you want to mimic hair. So you don't want anything that's too waxy and you don't want anything that's um, too soft because you want very light feathery strokes and you just follow the brow through. And if you, my little trick is if you lift that area to give yourself a brow lift, as you're going through the eyebrow, just go to the top half. Don't do it all the way through. So go to the top half of that arch and then just bring it round. Already I can see Look that. that. That's really interesting. Look at that. And it's a brilliant colour. It really is a universal colour because my brows are a lot darker than yours. And this didn't, you know, sometimes even if it's supposed to be the right colour for you, I'll sometimes put in a dark brown and it just looks orange. It just doesn't yeah. look good. This is a good universal colour. You know what? You've hit the nail on the head because most brow products are too warm, mm. which means they've got too much red or they've got too much orange in them. Um, and brows, if you really want to mimic hair, hair, brow hair, it needs to be cool. And this has quite a lot of blue in it, which is why it's quite taupey. It's like a gray color. And you just think that doesn't look like my brows. If you put it on your hand, you're like, that's not going to work. But it absolutely yeah. does. And we developed this with uh, Look Good, Feel Better, which is the cancer charity. So, you know, being able to draw in a sort of artificial brow, but it's so important. I never used to worry about my brows until really I probably mid 30s and it was a makeup artist he said grace you know you need to do even if you've got great brows it adds definition it gives you structure and now obviously as i've aged and moved on they've really really thinned out it's like it just finishes and also it gives you a bit of a not a brow lift but it just lifts that area and then the other side as we always know you know always put a little bit of highlighter on the brow bone so i've put it on the other end so once again, it's just quick and easy. So it's, you know, just highlights the brow bone, you draw it in. And then this little trick I quite like to do is I use this color on the inner rim of my eye from that inner corner. And I just do a big fat line. I mean, it's as technical as that, not. Brilliant. I just do this really big fat line and sometimes I bring it down if I'm really tired. And then it just sort of brightens the eye area. That's brilliant. Because I was going to ask you if you would use it as a multitask. So I'm glad that you would because straight away I thought that was a great colour. Because you remember people used to say use white, but white's too harsh. That's the perfect colour. White color. is too, too harsh. I wouldn't use this in the inner rim because I don't think it's soft enough. The yeah. colour's perfect. On my eyeliners, I've got an inner rim color and it is this color. And once again, it's not white because white just looks, but to do it here is really easy. And I have done, I've used that shade through my socket. I've literally just drawn a big fat line. In fact, I'll do it so you can see it. Oh. Just a bit of a fat line just above my socket but never bring, bring it all the way down here because it drags the eye down. So I've used that and then I've just got a brush and I've just blended it. That is a good trick, look at that. So it just gives you a little bit of soft contouring, but I don't do that every day. Uh -huh. I, don't, I definitely don't do that every day. That's lovely. So I just literally do my brows. And because you've got the blush, I mean, you can actually do a whole eye look just using these, these products if you wanted. That looks good. And again, it's a universal colour, so it's that mm. really, I'm impressed. That is a good trick. Good trick. That's a good. Because you know most contouring shades, most people use bronzer to contour, and you can't. You can't contour with a bronzer. Because what you're doing is you're creating shadows. And if you look at, if you look behind you, and look at a shadow, it's not orange, it's not bronze, it's like this gray, cool, taupey color. So that's effectively what you're doing is you're creating shadows on, on the face. And then, you know, you can finish if you want with mascara, bit of eyeliner, you know, depending on what you need. And but I must say, your mascara is exceptional. And I think oh, it's I so clever it. 
I think it's so clever that you've got the two sides and the, the brushes are very well thought out. How many people say that they don't bother wearing mascara on their bottom lashes? Yeah, because you can't get a big brush yeah. there. And they say, oh, I just don't bother. Well, I think that's that's a standout too. I think that's, and it's a nice formulation too. Yeah. So with the mascara, I was like, I want one mascara. I don't want hundreds and hundreds of mascaras. And I just, I just don't, I think it's the beauty industry trying to sell you laser products and get you to spend more money. And I've got a real thing about it, which is probably why I'm never going to be some multi-millionaire because I've probably, the products last too long. But with the mascara, I thought I want one mascara. If I want to volumize and curl and volumize, I can do that. But then sometimes I just want a tiny little bit of lengthening or definition, which is a different mascara. I wanted a treatment. So this mascara is a beautiful formula and it's got a treatment in it. And then also top lashes. My bottom lashes are so short. I could not use a brush. I'd end up with mascara down here. So that's why I put that little fine comb but also it's great if you just want to do a little bit of definition because you don't always want a full lash effect. And then the other thing um, that I did is, you know, um, mascara brushes are round, aren't they? They're round. I cut the edges of the sides. So it means when you bring it here, the flat edge goes right to the root. So when you pull it through, you don't need a curler. I love that mascara, but then I'm biased, so it's hard for me to go. It's genius because I, I, well, I don't feel. I'm allowed to say it. It's a nice product. I'm allowed to. Yeah, say you're it. allowed to say it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm allowed to, and I have a different. It's one of those little things that I didn't notice until a friend pointed it out, and then uh, your mascara actually helped with this. She says that. Um, so my lashes have always been quite long, but again, as you get older, they're not as long as they were. So they're still, I suppose they're not bad, but they were longer, but she gets really annoyed that at the very corner, they start to sort of, yeah. and she says your bottom ones get tangled with your top ones. And she says yeah. it really annoys her. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm sorry, I can't, yeah. I don't know what to do. So see that little small brush, I was able to do the top ones and then I could take the small brush and I could actually yeah. separate and um, that kept it sort of neat. But um, yeah. I thought it was funny that she said, your eyelashes are annoying me. And I was like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I'm not sure what to do. I love long. You see, my I don't really have long eyelashes, but the, you know what's interesting about mascaras? The formula is important. Yeah. But equally, and we could almost argue that the brush is even more important. The brush is so important to get that right effect. So what I love about this is it really does, it really does make my lash, my lashes look long. And, and then you can build it because you don't always want that really thick, heavy, clumpy. Yeah. Well, it I was about to say, I'm so not flattering. I'm not just saying this, but there was no clumping. And I was expecting that maybe on the bottom lashes, just because that's what mascara does, I thought I'll put the bottom lashes on and then I might run through it with a comb. But I didn't have to. Yeah, see, look. Yeah. And as you say, if someone really, really likes to build it up, then they can do that. And if they want just a light coating. But I was prepared just because you can't help it with mascara. I was prepared to maybe just brush it through, but I didn't have to. So that no, was a nice really. surprise. I thought that was really clever. And I think what's interesting is, you know, I always find there's different types of women, you know, some women who just cannot live without mascara. So they would, I don't wear mascara every day because I think it's a little bit more makeup. It looks a little bit more like makeup, if that makes sense. So I generally don't, but what I do do is um, I put a little bit of eyeliner because my eye, my eyes are quite s small now and I just need that added definition. But either one or not do it at all. But yeah. it just, eyes are so, I think eyes are so important because I mean, they're the gateway to the soul, aren't they? So that's what people look, you know, when you're talking, you make eye contact. So you want your eyes to be 
wide awake, bright, wide awake, full of, you know, not, not. So I think this blush through the eyelid is absolutely yeah. beautiful. And then once again, because you can buff, buff it into the skin, it doesn't, it doesn't look like eyeshadow. It just looks like beautiful skin. And then the last bit is lips. And again, I got a chance to try the liner and the gloss. And that was another clever thing because you've made sure that the liner has also got the highlighter in it. So yes. so let me too. tell you about this lip liner because my lips have really thinned out as I've aged. I've always had really full lips. And I, well, I want a full lip and I love that full lip, you know, the Angelina Jolie or the, you know, that beautiful beautiful full full lips so I'm like well you need to use lip liner and I think sort of lip liner is a little bit like what's the word almost not retro but out of date it's yeah. like oh lip liners they they don't seem relevant today yeah and I think the other thing which I've noticed about Instagram makeup and again everyone can wear what they want this isn't a judgment it's just something that I've noticed is that a lot of people are using lip liner to overline it's almost as yeah. if they're not using it for what it can be used for which yeah. is just to create a nice lip some people are using yeah. it to do that very obvious overline yeah it's not it just, for me, I mean like you say it's a fashion look I mean I've yeah. got three three daughters 15 19 and 22 and you know fashion has changed and that really overlined excessive I mean I love a full plump lip but now it's gone too far where it it just it doesn't look natural and it just so um you do lip liner is important and also the other reason why lip liner is important as you age is you know where you get sort of fine lines and mariette lines you don't want lipstick or lip gloss sort of bleeding into it and classically you'd match your lip liner to your lipstick and I thought well I don't want a whole line I don't want five different lip liners and I thought I want something that will almost contour my lips so um this lip liner is lip coloured so I play a lot with tone and undertone and colour because I'm trying to mimic. I want to look like I've got a natural lip. And if you actually analyse lips, a lot of the universal lip liners tend to be brown or, or beige, not beige, but peachy coloured. Your lips aren't that colour. And I think they, they became really popular when we all started using nude lipsticks, you know, peachy nude lipsticks, which is great because they blend in. But we're not always wearing lipstick and sometimes we're just using glosses. So this is lip coloured in the sense that it's got blue in it, pinky, and then it's it's um, almost anchored in this blue undertone. Too much information, but I think you'll be surprised how many people absolutely they love to know how something's put together and what the ethos is behind it. So believe me, we'll all be geeking out about this. We love it. Right, so I've done it as quite an aggressive line because I want to show you, right? That's quite an aggressive line, but you can see uh -huh. how it's giving me shape definition. And then what I like to do is I just literally soften the edges because I want it to look as though they're my lips, not that I'm wearing lip liner. So I always soften and that's, I don't believe in rules. I think you, you, you create your own rules and ways of doing things. But the one, the, if I did have one rule in makeup, it's no hard edges. Mm -hmm. it's all soft blended beautifully blended and then what I might do is I might just accentuate my cupid's bow mm -hmm. so quite often I just do that I don't put any on anything on my lips especially if I if I'm going out and I've got meetings and I'll put some mascara on so my eyes are a little bit more finished then I don't want to then put a gloss or a lipstick because then I feel too made up mm -hmm. and this is really makeup no makeup 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 if that makes sense so I quite often just leave my lips like that so it gives gives it the shape and definition and fullness and then as you know makeup artists always say put a little bit of highlighter on the cupid's bow so I've added that it looks great and, and it has to be very very super fine because what you don't want to look like as though you've you've drunk a glass of milk 
a tiny little milk that milk moustache <laughs> is not a good look no that that's a really good tip that you've given us though a lot of people would be unaware that you could even do that but you've you can see here it looks very natural and I suppose you've taken again the natural colors of the lip and then you've exactly. used your makeup to enhance what's already there when most of the time the first thing people do is cover the lip yes and get this lip covered so that's yes really exactly and also if you do that if you put a lip gloss on or I love bold color and I think as you age wearing stronger bold colors red lip all that sort of stuff it does not look good if you've got really thin lips and then worse, the more pigmented, the more color, if it starts sort of bleeding. So it's no, I, I, I sort of, I spend a lot of time talking obviously to women and working with women and makeup and, you know, a lot of women have said, I do, there's a number of sort of truths almost like, oh, I do the same makeup as I did 20 years ago. Well, you don't use the same skincare as you did 20 years ago. You don't wear the same clothes. We change and we have to adapt what we do according to where we are today to put our best face forward, to look, you know, look amazing. Um, the second one is, oh, it's really confusing. It's intimidating. Too many products you need to be a makeup artist. No, you don't. Doesn't need to be, diff you know, it doesn't need to be complicated. And the other, the third one was, well, I don't really know where to start. Where do I start? And where, where do I finish? And that's where I got this, the idea with the four steps. Mm -hmm. It's like a little recipe. It's like four basic steps, quick, easy, and you're done. You know, well, it's the honestly, sort of idea, really. It's brilliant. I mean, I'm wearing it. It's so comfortable. And again, I can vouch for the fact that it doesn't feel like I'm wearing anything. I don't. Yeah, and the yeah. other thing is, I'm not worried that if I touched my face, I would leave like a gap where my makeup was <laughs> you know sometimes people will say I've got a scratch and they're like oh no I've took the yeah and off. it's just mm -hmm. the one thing I will say because I'm 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 honest I'm brutally honest so if you wear a lot of like cream liquid products and a lot of mine are pretty much the whole range is it is not as long lasting as wearing powder based products because as I said the powder sits it almost glues it still mm -hmm. and it's much longer lasting but for me I would rather halfway through the day or if I'm getting ready to go out just touch up the blush a little bit saying this is quite long lasting and if you then obviously use the primer because that's got this binding agent but because it it sort of blends and buffs into the skin it sort of it holds if that makes sense but it's not as longer 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 lasting as powder um, but I don't like that look. I don't like makeup and especially powder that sits on top of foundation. I yeah. just think it looks horrible. Well, I think you've done a wonderful job. And Thank you. I think it would be great if we could chat again. I think there's a lot yeah. to cover. Um, could you tell me all the socials, the website, everywhere that people can check you out. Because I know you do a lot on Instagram too. I think I I'm the last know. person in the world that I need to get an Instagram. Don't have one. So I'll need to you sort You don't need out. one. <laughs> we'll miss YouTube. I like YouTube, I must admit. So can you tell us where everyone can find you yeah. and your products? Yeah. So um, from studio10beauty.com. We're with some online beauty retailers, but I love it when people come to us. Um, and then we're on Instagram, Studio 10 Makeup, Facebook, Studio 10 uh, Beauty, YouTube, Studio 10 Beauty, um, and we're on Twitter, Studio 10 Beauty. But I'm active on all our socials, so if you send a message or ask a question, usually, I mean, obviously I've got a team around me, but I'm always on there. I love, love talking. So that's maybe something we can do another time, Absolutely. is pull in loads of questions and we'll do a little Q&A or something like that. I think that would be brilliant because everything that you're doing, is it just resonates with me. And I know that a lot of the people that watch YouTube will feel exactly the same. And they always say to me, can you do some more makeup? And I hold back until I know that it's the right thing. And this is definitely yeah. something where I was like, right, we're on to something here because this is doing exactly what you're saying it should do. Yeah. And it's speaking to a lot of us. So... I can't yeah. wait to and our skin does change you know it's changing our whole life but really 35 36 
it really starts. And then into your 40s, 50s, 60s, um, the structure changes. It's not just the texture of the skin. You're struck, you use collagen and it's, you know, the wrong makeup can be really aging. And we need that extra. It's just, it needs to do a job of work and we need a little bit of a boost, whether that's adding some radiance because our skin's lackluster, whether that's a healthy flush of color, whether that's a bit of structure, um, even out the skin tone. It's And it's powerful. Makeup is so powerful. I love it. I think that's the perfect end to our chat. Makeup is powerful. And you're right. We all love it. It's great fun. So I will look forward well, to seeing what you do next. Oh, it's been great. So let's do it again soon. That's a deal. Yes, that's. Oh, thanks so much for talking to me. Take care. Thank Bye. You.